Okay, now, you know, when you're thinking about sort of the applications or the uses of the derivative, it turns out that some of them are a little bit unexpected. Now, let me try to draw you just a graph of a function. And let's take a look at how that graph looks. You know, a great question that constantly is being asked by math people is the following. Um, first of all, first of all, you've got to pick what function you, know, you want to graph, otherwise it looks sort of awful. So let's try to graph this function right here. Here's the graph. That's y equals f of x. It's very smooth, so we can take derivatives and so forth of it. No problem. No problem, no problem. You know, a great, great question that's extremely hard in mathematics is to ask, well, how do you solve equations, right? I mean, these are things that we saw since we were just little kids, right? So if I have a function f of x and I want to set it equal to 0 and find the solutions, that in general is an extremely hard question. In fact, in general, no one knows how to do this for every single possible function you can put in here. Even with just polynomials, just like you know, x cubed minus 3x and so forth, you know, even if you go up to the fifth degree polynomial, like x to the fifth plus stuff, there's no known sort of method. In fact, it's a mathematical theorem that there can't be a known method. So this is really hard, basically. Bottom line is it's really hard. Yet, we still would like to find out values for, for x, which will make this thing 0, or at least approximate them. Visually, of course, it's clear where those points are. Those are points where the uh, curve crosses the x-axis. So this would be a 0. The question is, how can you sort of figure out or approximate the value of that? Well, there's actually a great technique that's immediate consequence of um, looking at the derivative and thinking about it as the slope of a tangent line. One thing we can do is the following. Let's just pick a guess and say, well, OK, here's the actual value. Uh, what should I call it? I'll call it, I'll call it, um, uh, I'll call it x bar. Because that is the value for sure for which makes f0. Now suppose I pick a guess, and I'm off, of course. I'm always off. And I'll call this x1. Well, then if I run up to the function, this would be f of x1. That's certainly a far cry from 0. You have to admit, I'm trying to get the thing to be 0. So that was sort of a bad guess. The question is, could I use this particular guess here, x1, to generate a better guess? If I could, then I could iterate that process and use the new value I found as the initial guess and then produce even a better guess, even a better guess. And if things are sort of OK and, and the world is nice to me, maybe I'll actually end up heading toward the actual value I, I seek. So how would I get a better guess? Well, here's a simple idea. Why don't we take this dot here in the curve and look at the line that's tangent to the curve right at that point. If you draw the tangent line here, it's sort of maybe hard to see what it looks like. But I'll try to draw it as best as I can. A little bit tricky. So that's the tangent line. Tangent line at x equals x1. Okay, So that's just supposed to graze the curve right there. Now, a line is actually much easier to deal with. That's just y equals mx plus b. Much easier to deal with than a complicated curve. So why don't I ask where this line actually crosses the x-axis, which is right here. And if you look at that, notice that visually it's clear that if I use that as my second guess, that's a lot better of a guess to this than this. So actually, this is even closer. And now I can repeat. I can say, well, I'll use that as my guess. I'll go to the curve. Look at the point, find the tangent line there, and see where the tangent line crosses the, the x-axis. And that gives me another guess, x3. And notice that's even closer yet. And if I keep repeating this, I have the potential to get closer and closer to the actual value, just by successively finding tangent lines and seeing where the tangent line crosses the x-axis. Well, this method, in, in many, many examples, actually does actually head toward, these values actually do head toward this one we're looking for. And this method was first discovered by, by Isaac Newton. When he was doing, you know, he, this guy, this guy had his finger in every pie. He was inventing calculus. He was inventing gravity. He invented everything, and in fact, he invented this method, which is now known as Newton's method.